Hi, this is Marcy and David Lynn aboard the sailboat Nine of Cups. This is the second part of a series of videos on repairing fiberglass boat decks. In the first part, David showed how to identify problem areas. In this part, he will talk about how he removes and replaces bad sections of the deck core. The first step in the process is to use a permanent marker and straight edge to mark the outline of the area to be cut. It's easier to cut and fair if the lines are made as straight as possible, which is why I use a straight edge. I try to leave at least two inches of deck around the outside of my cut to make the fairing easier later on. The next step is to cut out the top layers of fiberglass. I've used several tools over the years for making the cut. A multi-tool with a metal cutting blade will work. I've also used a small circular saw. My tool of choice, however, is my battery-powered angle grinder. It's faster than a multi-tool and it gets into tighter spots than a circular saw. I use a metal cutting wheel on the grinder. This wheel is intended for stainless steel. It's very thin and makes a small, well-defined cut. For grinding down the surface, I use a sanding flap disc on my grinder. This is an old 80 grit disc I've been using for years. And don't forget to use a respirator. There will be a lot of fiberglass and paint dust in the air. The biggest downside with a grinder is it makes a lot of dust, so I always use a vacuum with it. Some of the more expensive tools, like the Festool grinder, have an optional dust collection system, which virtually eliminates the dust problem. My low-cost solution isn't quite as sophisticated or effective, but it does get most of the dust, and as long as I pause frequently and vacuum up what did get missed, not too much gets blown onto the neighboring boats. Don't cut any deeper than necessary. I try to keep the cut to a half an inch or less, just enough to cut through the top layer of fiberglass. Yep. Once the cuts have been made, it's time to pry off the top layer of fiberglass. I'll be reusing the fiberglass later, so I want to avoid damaging it any more than necessary. If the core is very wet or totally lost its adhesion to the fiberglass, the cut section of the glass will pull up quite easily. In this case, the, the core was in pretty good condition except for a few spots, so it takes some work to get the fiberglass off. I use a hammer, chisels, screwdrivers, and sometimes even a pry bar to work it loose. I just keep working around the edges, trying not to break the fiberglass until eventually it comes loose. With practice, you'll find your tempo will continue to pick up until you reach a point that you actually start attracting woodpeckers. Next, I'll remove the bad sections of the core. In this case, there are only three sections that need to be removed. I use a hammer and chisel to chip away at the wet sections. Once the bad sections of core have been removed, the lower layer of fiberglass has to be sanded smooth. The grinder and flapper disc are just too aggressive for this, so I use a multi-tool with an 80 or 100 grit sanding pad. The top of the remaining core should also be sanded smooth. For this I use either the same multi-tool or a random orbital sander with 80 to 100 grit sandpaper. The bottom side of the fiberglass I removed earlier must also be sanded smooth. Now we get to the fun part, cutting the wood. 
I always use marine grade plywood that is the same thickness as the old core, in this case about 5 8 inch. The first step is to measure all the areas to be replaced. If there's an undercut or the area is bigger than about a half a square foot, I use several pieces of ply rather than just one piece. Where the plywood fits under the old fiberglass, I use a hammer to tap it into place. This footage is actually from a different repair I did a while back, but the process is the same. I'll fit the pieces into place like a mosaic and label each one so I don't have to waste time finding the next piece of wood while the epoxy is kicking. Often, as I'm fitting the wood, I'll discover that the undercut requires more work to get the wood to slide under. I use a chisel, a screwdriver, or a multi-tool to get all the old core and fiberglass removed. The next step is to dry fit all the pieces to check the fit, make sure everything goes into place. This is also a good time to figure out how I will apply pressure to the top piece of fiberglass once it is bonded in place. It needs to be pressed down into place to make sure it bonds well with the core and that it is flush or below the surrounding fiberglass. I've used three methods. One method is to use weights. I've used dumbbells, large pieces of steel or iron, and water jugs. I first cover the area with wax paper so the weights don't get epoxy to the fiberglass. Here I've wrapped two by twos with packing tape and then set water jugs on top to press down on the fiberglass. Another method is to screw strips of wood into the surrounding fiberglass. This was shot early one morning when it was quite foggy, which is why the footage is a bit off. I wrap each wood strip with packing tape to keep it from bonding to the epoxy. Then once the top layer of fiberglass is in place, I hold it down by screwing these pieces of wood to the surrounding fiberglass. The best method of all is to use a vacuum bagging technique. A plastic sheet is taped into place around the area and a vacuum is created under the plastic using a vacuum pump. Since atmospheric pressure is about 15 pounds per square inch, an area of just one square foot can conceivably have almost a ton of weight applied evenly over the entire bonded area. In practice, the amount of pressure would be less than this, but it would be significantly more than the other options. It does require more equipment and manpower than I have, however, so I can't vacuum bag this job. Instead, I plan to use the wood strips screwed into place. In the next video, I'll show you what epoxy supplies I use, the process for bonding the new core in place, how I use fiberglass cloth to strengthen the repair, the filling and fairing process, and finally priming the work and prep for painting. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. To view more of our travel and how to videos, visit our blog and website at www.justalittlefurther.com.